So far, we've just used our low frequency oscillator, LFO, to control the cutoff frequency of our filters. However, there's lots of other places we could patch an LFO into in our modular, and a really useful one is the pulse width modulation. That will change the character of the sound following the speed of the LFO. I'm going to choose template, template, square wave initially. There's our lovely little square wave shape. And if you remember, the pulse width control on the driver for a bank of oscillators affects how wide that positive going pulse is. Changing the pulse width changes the character of the sound. Well, rather than sitting here and doing this manually, let's call in our LFO to do that for us automatically. I'm going to patch from the triangle output of the LFO, something that rises and falls steadily without a sudden jump, such as the sawtooth or square wave has. Patch that to pulse width modulation. Increase its pulse width to maximum to change its shape to be a pure triangle. And it changes to not follow MIDI, but instead be underneath manual control here, and set it to an intermediate frequency. I'll play a note. And start increasing the modulation depth, how strongly the LFO is controlling this pulse width. Here it creates almost sort of a coursing or a Doppler type of sound. I can make it very subtle, as if two oscillators are detuned, or very fast nervous. And that's a great way of creating a high tension sound, by the way. And indeed, it's even more fun when I bring in a second square wave. So I'm going to repatch this down to my mixer, connect my mixer back to my filter, grab another oscillator in this bank. That means that oscillator is also controlled by this pulse width control for the driver. Connect it down to my mixer, enable it, drop it down an octave. Having a very fast modulation creates that really high tension nervous sound. Or I can make it more subtle by dropping down to a lower frequency and decreasing its width again by clicking on this little radar pattern next to the jack to change the modulation depth. Now, why did I use a triangle wave instead of something like a sawtooth or a square wave? Well, a sudden jump in modulation results in a sudden jump in tone, which may or may not be what you want. For example, I'm going to pull the sawtooth wave over, connect it to the pulse width input instead, change the pulse width on the LFO back down to zero, so I have a normal sawtooth at its base frequency, and you can hear things jump as the sawtooth resets. Maybe you want that sort of hard resetting sound, or it might just be annoying. I mean, if you're trying to go for that sort of sound, pull in the square wave and have a lot of fun with this. You could even change the pulse width so it cuts out temporarily. Also invert the modulation depth, so instead I go to a minimum pulse width, dropping out the sound. There we go. Sometimes just backing off a little bit can make a sound a lot more musically useful. Now this sounds like a whole bunch of oscillators detuned rather than just two. So, pulse width modulation is certainly a way of creating a thicker, more coarse sound when you only have a couple of oscillators available.